properties logs and exponents. Okay, these properties are going to look strange, and uh, some of them are, the first three are written in log form. Once you convert them to exponential form, you'll see exactly where they come from. So it turns out that log b number one, property number one, it turns out that log base A of A is equal to one. You see that in log form, you don't understand where it comes from. Just change it to exponential form. What is it saying? A to the, th this A, right? A to the what equals what? It's saying A to the first power equals one, equals A. Well, yeah, we know that. So it's an, ob it's an obvious thing from uh, an old property of exponents that you learn. Okay, log base A of one, so the input of one, well, if you think back to those graphs, what did you get? When the input was one, you got zero. Now, is that obvious in exponential form? What's it saying in exponential form? A to the zero, zero equals one, you knew that. That's better still be true when you write that in log form. Okay, and then Property number three, a, log base A of A to the X power is just equal to X. So by the way, if you know property three, property one, you don't need to know. It's, it's a subset of property three. It's where X is just equal to one. So why is that true? Log base A of A to the X power equals X. The, so the, it's like the exponent's just falling down. So why is that true? Well, I mean, what is this in, what is this saying in, in exponential form? A to the x is equal to a to the x. A to the x is equal to itself. Yeah, okay, that's true. All right, and then uh, fill in, I didn't write down the blank, so let me write down the blank. Fill in the blank. Okay, if a to the x equals a to the y, well, let's say it this way. A to the x equals a to the y if and only if what? what? What do you think has to be true about the exponents? If a to the x equals a to the y, then under the right conditions, the exponents have to be equal. There's a couple of restrictions. a can't equal zero, right? Because you raise zero to any power, you get zero. Same thing with a equals one, and we insist that a is bigger than zero. Okay, so if you have an equation, exponents with the same base on both sides, you can drop the base and set the exponents equal. That's what that says. Okay, you're going to solve your first logarithmic equations in this example. So in part A, you're asked to solve log base 4 of x is equal to 3. Practice saying that at least in your head. Log base 4 of x is equal to 3. Okay, you take the test. You have no idea what to do. What could you try to do? Convert. convert. So if we convert log base 4 of x to exponential form, what do we get? 4 to the third equals x. I'm going to put the x on the left side. 4 to the third equals x, or x equals 4 to the third. Is that true? Is that the conversion? Yeah. Oh, then it's, it's solved, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, we should probably write what 4 to the 3rd is. What is that? 64. If the exponent were really big, though, you'd just, like if it were 4 to the 10th power, so if you had a 10 here instead of 3, you'd probably just leave it as 4 to the 10th. All right, second equation. Log base 4 of 8 is equal to 2x plus 1. Same idea. The only thing we know how to do at this point is convert. So what would this be if you convert? 4 to the, what's the exponent? 2x plus 1 equals 8. Okay, it's not completely obvious, though, what x is in this case, is it? Okay, but what's true about both 8 and 4? They're both powers of 2. So I'm thinking, here's my line of thought here. If you go back to these properties, if we can write both sides with the same base, we can set the exponents equal. That's the idea. In this case, the base A would be 2. So how do you write A, or 8, as a power of 2? 2 to the 3rd. What about 4? 
Okay, so be careful here. Two squared, so four to the two x plus one is two squared to the two x plus one. Then you have to remember what one of the laws of exponents says. When you have an exponent on the inside and an exponent on the outside, what do you do? You keep the base and you multiply. But that means you have to remember to distribute that exponent of two. So you think of this exponent as a single quantity and you distribute the two. If you don't remember to, di to distribute, you're gonna be wrong. So if you do that, what do you get? Two to the four x plus two. On the left side, you still have two cubed. So what can you say about the exponents by, by property four? So by this next equal sign is by property four. You could set three, you could drop the base two and set three equal to four x plus two, and now you know how to solve it. Does that make sense? In fact, what's the answer gonna be? So subtract two from both sides, you get one equals four x. So what does x equal? One fourth. I don't like writing it that way, I'm gonna write it as x equals one fourth. So let's go back up. Does that technique make sense? So that's, that's property four above, a uh, very useful property in certain situations. We uh, basically just, we, we had base two and that allowed us to set these, the exponents equal to each other.